In the early 2000s, I grew up watching a lot of television and film that fully represented black women in girlhood, a very big contrast to today's media. These representations allowed me to feel seen and included. TV shows and movies like That's So Raven, True Jackson VP, Let It Shine, Jump In, High School Musical, and Ant Farm gave me the representation I needed as a young black girl. Although this was before my time, quote, black women and girls could tune into shows like Sister Sister, Moesha, and Girlfriends and see a spectrum of blackness depicted unquote, and black women and girls were able to see themselves in many different characters on many different shows. However, the trend of casting biracial black women as fully black women in television and film tends to be an unescapable reality in recent years. I will say that casting or replacing fully black women with biracial black women in media is nothing new. Black female characters in 80s and 90s black sitcoms were predominantly played by biracial black women actresses. Think Lisa Bonet's character in The Cosby Show and and briefly in a different world. I am sure there are more examples, but I am primarily going to be focusing on the early 2000s to the present media environment we find ourselves in today. Within current television shows and films that feature black women characters, these same characters are often portrayed by biracial black women, as they are often seen as the quote, standard bearer for blackness, unquote. For example, think Zendaya with her Disney characters Rocky Blue from Shake It Up and Casey Cooper from Casey Undercover. Although both of her siblings in Casey Undercover are dark-skinned and phenotypically black, the main character, Casey, is played by a biracial black actress, forcing viewers to believe that this is the only appropriate representation of blackness, specifically black women and girls in media. Don't get me wrong, Zendaya is an incredibly talented actress. However, her being biracial and therefore being seen as the ideal representation of black women in media has allowed her to, quote, become the predominant representative of young black girlhood, unquote, and womanhood, which is quite problematic to say the least, as young black Black women and girls who are phenotypically black are expected to look mixed or racially ambiguous. Therefore, quote, biracial girls are constantly positioned as examples of black representation in media, unquote, and are used to represent black women and girls as a whole. This again is incredibly problematic as biracial black women with Eurocentric features do not equally and diversely represent everyday black women and girls within society. It is very clear that within media and entertainment, quote, light skin biracial women are granted more praise, access, and visibility than dark-skinned or monoracial black women, unquote. Therefore, the erasure of black women in entertainment, although unfortunate, is not surprising. Within media and entertainment, it has become a normal and regular practice for biracial black women to play, quote, monoracial black characters, unquote. With this form of erasure, biracial black women are seen as being the ideal version of blackness and the type of black black women and girls should try to obtain. Although the representation of fully black women in media and entertainment has somewhat gotten better, this erasure of black women in popular television shows and film is still a common practice. At the end of the day, the biracial phenotype is generally, quote, upheld as more desirable and marketable, unquote, within entertainment and media. Just think about it. When you think about successful and popular black actresses in Hollywood, one of the first people that comes to mind is Zendaya, a half black woman, and this is primarily due to featurism and colorism. Quote, when you look at who who's praised and who's running Hollywood, unquote, it is very rarely fully black women that are mentioned. With this, it is clear that phenotypical black women are not given the same opportunities as their biracial counterparts. I want to be clear and say that although biracial and light-skinned is often used interchangeably, there is a distinction between the two. Biracial is defined as having biological parents of two different ethnicities, whereas light-skinned refers to somebody, often a non-white person, quote, having pale or relatively pale skin. Skin, unquote. Therefore, you can be fully black and also light-skinned. Think Tisha Campbell or Storm Reid, for example. Are black women in high-grossing movies? Absolutely. However, their role or character is, quote, never enough to have a lasting effect on white Hollywood or to evoke real change, unquote. At the end of the day, within media, specifically media that is consumed by white people, the conversation about colorism and featurism is essentially non-existent because white people generally don't have to think about any of that. If they see a black person in media, that's all they see, a black person. Whether this black person is biracial or not, that is something they don't really care to know. All they know is that since you appear to be black, that's what you are. Therefore, the conversation of representation seems to continuously be redundant. As a black woman myself, it still is pretty difficult finding movies and TV shows that are your typical coming-of-age rom-com story that also features fully black women. Currently, the only film that comes to mind is Rye Lane. The entertainment 
entertainment industry has made it clear time and time again that biracial and or light-skinned black actresses are the only women, quote, worthy of lead roles, unquote, in terms of black women representation. This again is a trend primarily involving black female characters, whereas, quote, oftentimes when you do see dark-skinned characters in desirable roles or at all, it is black men and boys. This has bolstered the notion that darker skin is equated to masculinity and lighter skin to femininity, unquote. In these shows and films, black families that are portrayed almost always have a biracial and or light-skinned wife and daughter, while the father slash husband and sons are phenotypically dark-skinned. An obvious double standard as unambiguous black men are rarely portrayed by biracial and or lighter-skinned men. The male characters are normally played by dark-skinned, fully black men, while their black female counterparts are, again, either biracial or light-skinned. Black women who are darker-skinned do not have the opportunities in media to be the main character because they aren't seen as being one in real life. They are always somehow the funny, loud side character friend. It is clear that the decision of casting biracial black women as fully black women is primarily, quote, to create palatable TV for white people and give them fake insight on what it's like to be black, unquote. That being said, quote, it seems much easier to sell a storyline when the main character is racially ambiguous, unquote, as this representation makes white media feel more comfortable as well as black people who consider Eurocentric features to be ideal when it comes to black representation on TV. This reminds me of the whole online discourse surrounding South African singer Tyla and her racial identity. On multiple occasions, Tyla has identified as being colored and quote, comes from a lot of different cultures, unquote. Before I continue, here is the definition of colored specifically relating to the United States and the Jim Crow era. Quote, colored is a racial descriptor historically used in the United States during the Jim Crow era to refer to an African American, unquote, person. However, pertaining to South Africa, where Tyla is from, the term coloreds, quote, refers to members of multiracial ethnic communities in South Africa who have ancestry from African, European, and Asian people, unquote. It is my understanding that this is the term she has identified as. That being said, quote, in South Africa, it is a distinct identity that is officially recognized, unquote. South African colored people, quote, belong to an ancestral multiracial community legally established during the violent system of apartheid in South Africa, following the Population Registration Act of 1950s, requiring of people to register into one of four racial categories, white, black, Indian, or colored, unquote. Tyla identifying as colored has caused a lot of controversy, particularly in black spaces. Many, specifically those in the black community, believe this is a way for Tyla to erase her black identity in order to have a closer proximity to whiteness and racial ambiguity. To defend herself, Tyla replied with, quote, never denied my blackness. I don't know where that came from, she wrote. I'm mixed with black, Zulu, Irish, Mauritian, Indian, and colored. In South A, I would be classified as a colored woman, and other places, I would be classified as a black woman. Race is classified differently in different parts of the world, unquote. Although controversy has surrounded Tyla, specifically regarding how she identifies racially and on multiple occasions has claimed a colored and mixed identity, which is completely in her own right, the black community generally considers her black because she has a phenotype that is considered ideal deal relating to blackness and the black community. Which also reminds me of Cardi B. Throughout her career in the public eye, Cardi B, who now claims an Afro-Latina identity, quote, has been subject to scrutiny and often denied recognition of her black identity, unquote. Because of this, on many occasions, people have questioned her identity as a black woman as well as her frequent use of the n-word as she has only claimed a black identity as of recently. In the past, Cardi B has considered herself to be half Spanish, quote, admitting she was unaware of the correct terminology at the time, unquote. She continues and says, quote, I should have said half Hispanic because me saying I'm Spanish don't make sense because it's a language. As we get older, we learn the terms better, unquote. Previously, Cardi B has also identified as, quote, Latinx instead of explicitly owning her blackness, unquote. Just for brief clarification, quote, Hispanic refers to a person with ancestry from a country whose primary language is Spanish, unquote. Whereas Latino and its variations refer to a person with origin from anywhere in Latin America and the Caribbean, unquote. Tyla and Cardi B are two examples of two women who have previously never claimed a black identity still being welcomed into black spaces because of their racial ambiguity and their desirability within the black community. With this kind of representation, it is clear black women need to look a certain way in order to receive mainstream success within pop culture. If they don't, they are often dismissed. Yes, phenotypical and fully black women are welcomed into black spaces, however, they are
aren't celebrated and or uplifted in the same way biracial, racially ambiguous, and lighter-skinned black women are. Just think about actress Francesca Amuda Rivers. The world was absolutely shocked to see a fully black woman with Afrocentric features play a role that has historically been connected to white women and their beauty. Historically and even contemporarily at times, whiteness, especially pertaining to white women, is associated with femininity and beauty, whereas blackness is often seen as being the complete opposite. Francesca having Afrocentric features and looking phenotypically black disrupted the stereotype and narrative, forcing media to check their bias and misogynoir pertaining to black women and desirability. If Francesca was biracial and or had features that were Eurocentric, regardless of her race, she would have easily been more accepted and palatable by the media. As long as racially ambiguous black women claim a black identity, they are going to be welcomed into black and white spaces because of their desirability and closer proximity to whiteness. As I end, I want to make it clear that I'm not here to police or monitor how certain people identify as, specifically relating to race. I just think it is important to be mindful of how colorism, featureism, and desirability all play a role in determining who is worthy of mainstream success and visibility within pop culture and who is considered not. 